and we're joined by Gail Boyer at Canadian Blood Services in Kelowna. So there was an urgent call for blood. Tell us about that. You know, the urgent call out was across Canada. We were originally looking for about 22,000 donors and now we've actually had um, a great showing, I guess, from the Canadian population. And we have about 7,500 donors that are still needed between now and August 26th. Here in Kelowna, we still need just over 100 donors to fill our clinics um, before August 26th. Seems pretty busy in here today. Is this just a typical day? You know what? It's not actually. We've actually seen people respond to the call out for urgent need and um, we've actually seen them come in. So people have heard the call out and they're coming in to donate, which is exactly what we were looking for. So in general, you talk to people who come in here. What motivates people to give blood? You know what, a lot of people have a personal story, so they may have a family member that's needed blood. Um, some people have made it part of their lifetime routine, maybe they started in high school. Um, everybody has a different story, and so sometimes when your family's been touched by the need for blood, that's when you start donating. But it's your first time, um, I guess, why have you waited so long? I was worried that with my cancer history, I wouldn't be allowed to donate. But it turns out that once you've uh, survived cancer past five years, you are in fact allowed to donate. So they'll take your blood. So they'll take your blood. And I was pretty proud of that. I'm always a little nervous because I don't love needles. But once I'm in the chair and it's happening, I feel great. Yeah, and so what's your motivator? Just the fact that you can help people. That's it. Just the fact that you can help. You can help by doing something so simple. But they don't, they don't pay you. No, they don't pay you. The reward is just in helping. In helping and you get a cookie at the end. <laughs> what are the, some of the reasons why some people choose not to? What, what are the, what are the, do you think the, the factors that cause some people to, to not do that? The biggest thing that we hear from, from donors is that they haven't been asked. So I'm formally asking <laughs> um, that they just haven't asked and people just don't maybe understand that there is a constant need for blood. Um, and I think sometimes it's just, just the unknown, trying something for the first time, coming out um, and doing something that you've never done before. Um, there's always a little bit of nervousness when that happens. So people I think, are afraid? I, I think so. I think they just don't understand the process, don't know the process. And I always just say to them, you know, we're here to make you feel comfortable coming through our doors and it's like welcoming them into our home and we'll take care of you um, right. so just try it so to go through some of the things people will expect you have to uh, answer a few personal questions when you go through the screening process right. and then um, after that when you go to give blood there is a needle involved exactly yeah so we take you through the screening process um, ultimately to ask we ask personal questions we take your blood pressure and temperature we do an iron test a finger poke um, just to test your iron levels to make sure it's all safe for you to donate and also for the recipients to receive your blood um, then when you actually come onto the bed when you're going to make your donation. That donation could take between 5 and 15 minutes um, and that's your life-saving donation. That's going to a patient in need in a, in a hospital um, that's actually either going through chemo treatment or cancer treatment, maybe um, heart surgery, maybe unfortunately they've been in an accident. So there's many needs for blood products um, in hospitals. Will there be some people that truly do kind of react negatively once they get in the process? It, it, it can happen. What we always suggest is that people prepare. So lots of water the day before your appointment and the day of. Making sure you've had a meal about at least an hour before the appointment. Um, and just make sure you're generally feeling well. And always keeping in mind that your blood is actually going to a hospital patient in need. Typically they would have a compromised immune system. So you want to be feeling well because you're passing that blood on to a patient in need. And there's an event happening where we're seeing first responders come in. Tell yes. me about that. Yeah, we have um, first responders in the community coming out. And really, um, we have them kick off the event. And the idea is the community will then support them for the month of September. And here in the Okanagan, we see emergency responders out all the time, whether it's a fire, an emergency. Um, and so it's really a way for the public to reach out and say thank you to them. Come out and donate in September. Terrific. And uh, one last uh, word to people who maybe haven't given blood before? Um, the biggest thing is most of our donors come into our clinics because they love our cookies and juice. Um, <laughs> so it's uh, come and have some juice and cookies, save a life. Um, you can book your appointment at blood.ca or 188-2-donate. So after I give blood, I get cookies? You get lots of cookies. Yes, our lovely volunteers serve you cookies. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much, Gail. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.